Hello, everybody, and welcome back once again to another special edition of Civilization VI. Coming at you today with a full review and first impressions of the newly revealed civilization, Ethiopia. Led by Menelik II, this civ looks quite impressive indeed, so let's break it down. As mentioned in the release video from Fire Axis, Menelik is known for establishing Ethiopia as a bastion against colonialism. Emperor of Ethiopia from 1889 until his death in 1913, Menelik was the founder of modern Ethiopia as he expanded their borders and completed a vital centralization process that greatly reduced wars and allowed the country to defend itself against raids, destruction, and slavery. So what kind of abilities can you expect to see next week when Ethiopia is released? Well, let's start with the civilization's unique ability which is the Exumite Legacy. Sorry about the pronunciation if I've got that completely wrong. It provides plus one faith on all improved resources, as you can see here in this shot. So you've got the stone, the rice, the copper, the mercury, and the horses. That's four resources improved. That's, four re that's plus four faith in this city. And when you consider that this city is losing a lot of tiles to mountains, they've got a lot of districts here. I've taken a look at some cities from past saves and six to eight resources is a pretty conservative estimate of what you're typically going to see in a city. So once you get tiles improved, you're looking at some serious faith generation from this ability. In addition to that, you also gain a half faith per resource in Origin City in international trade routes. As you can see here, those five resources is translating to two and a half faith per international trade route uh, right here. So not too shabby as well, compounding those abilities of faith generation. And as if that wasn't enough, this ability also grants the ability to purchase your archeological museums and your archeologists with faith, as you can see here, as they are about to purchase your archeologists right here for 455 faith. Now, some of you, some, if you saw my breakdown of the reveal on Monday's Monday by Fire Axis of the July update, We'll notice that I was a little off on a couple of my predictions based on what glimpses we saw in that video of the Ethiopian civilization. In particular, I mentioned that I believed that this ability might include the um, purchasing of all theater square buildings, for instance, the monuments and um, the broadcast centers and even the museum, the, uh, the regular uh, museum. So I was a little off on that. In that video, they did say that introducing a unique ability to uh, improve your culture game or something along those lines and then at the same time they were showing the purchase of the archaeological museum so it just kind of made sense that that was the ability but this has a lot of cool synergy archaeological museum and the archaeologists that go with it uh, which is really really cool stuff certainly this area of the world is known for a lot of archaeological digs and a lot of research um, the traces of man go all the way back to a place called i believe it's called old gorge or something along those lines in this region so you can trace man all the way back to this region and so archaeological uh kind of synergy makes a lot of sense which is actually a lot of fun so there you go now how strong is that well let's consider the fact that there's been times where i've had a renaissance era monumentality run going and in that i've had archaeological museums made and i was able to purchase archaeologists with faith and i have to say that really does feel pretty strong maybe not as strong as being able to buy the monuments and other museums and stuff like that with faith but still pretty strong because archaeologists are really expensive either uh, a boatload of gold or sometimes 12 or 14 or more turns to hard produce and that's a really big obstacle and being able to just click a button purchase it with faith and immediately go out and start generating that culture and tourism certainly feels really really good so when you combine that with unbelievable faith production from the trade routes and from the resource faith generation that is a lot a lot of faith and uh, synergy going into this ability with the archaeological stuff as well so really good stuff and i would actually say for sure i would classify this as an a tier ability 
Next, we have the unique unit for Ethiopia, which is the Oromo Cavalry. It is a medieval era cavalry unit that replaces the courser and gives increased strength and visibility, as well as not taking penalties to moving over hills. Now, my first thought here before taking a closer look was, sweet, a medieval era unit. Uh, that's a pretty nice time to get a unique unit when trying to make a push in a domination game. And when you throw in some bonuses to movement and visibility, Bob Jronkel sounds fantastic. However, when you take a closer look, you can notice that it's actually only a plus two increase to strength over the typical courser unit, which it replaces, which is not particularly strong when you consider that it's actually still two base strength lower than the knight unit, which is the equivalent unit that you could also get in this era. So even though you're getting a little bit of a boost, overall the ability to go over hills and have extra visibility isn't worth giving up the combat strength so for the most part i would basically if i was looking to play a military game for instance i would just be more interested in getting knights than getting a whole bunch of these Oromo cavalry units because it's really when it comes down to it it's much more about the base strength of a unit and those other things are just little add-ons that are not nearly as as significant so i will say that overall these guys are a C tier at best when it comes to unique unit. They're not 100% completely insignificant, so I wouldn't say they're D tier, but they're definitely way down in, in that. So these Ethiopia's got lots of abilities. The unique unit is not a particularly strong one of them. In fact, it's quite poor, like I said. So there you have it. That's it. Next, we have the Rakyun Church Tile Improvement which I cleverly picked out of the video on Monday. And now that we know its power, let's talk a little bit more about it. The Rock Yoon, which must be built on either hills or volcanic soil, provides a base of plus one faith and an additional faith for each adjacent mountain and hill tile. And as you can see here, that will mean some very, very juicy faith generation. Now there is a fairly significant drawback to placing these tile improvements in that you're forced to give up a serious production generating tile each time that you do so. So if you're attempting a victory other than a religious one, you'll be you'll probably want to limit their use to maybe two or three per city depending on the strength of the tiles you have in that city and placing them in the optimal locations in order to maximize faith. Still, a very strong tile when you consider that big of a faith jump. And you can see even in this city, if they placed another one here, that would be another six faith uh, when you consider that there's four hills and a mountain around this tile. But like I said, if you're going for something other than a religious victory or the faith is really all that matters, you don't want to give up too much production when, for instance, you're going for a science or a culture victory because what ends up happening is you run out of hills that are producing stuff for you. And the further you get into the game, the more production you need. So giving up two and eventually even three more production on some of these tiles is not all that well advised. So like I said, two or three, probably at most, find the best places for them, put them there, and then probably mine the rest of your hills in order to make sure you've got plenty of production. Lots of faith though. And I would definitely say that this is probably a B tier type of tile improvement. I was considering even calling this an A, but the fact that you have to give up the the hills or volcanic soil as well um, is a little bit of a drawback that I would say just kind of knocks it down a little bit. Super solid and synergetic to the rest of the sieve, however, uh, and I really like it. Also, one quick note that these tiles actually cannot be destroyed by a volcano or really any uh, natural disaster, um, which is really nice because that means... They can be they can be um, ruined, but you can just improve them back up. You can just fix them back up. So having them pillaged is fine. You fix it and it's back to normal. So you don't ever have to actually use the um, the builder charge to get them back online, which is really nice uh, for sure to get your faith back online. Now, the final ability for Ethiopia is the unique ability of our leader Menelik which creates a lot of synergy with the rest of Ethiopia's abilities and really completes this sieve very nicely, in my opinion. This ability is known as the Council of Ministries, which grants science and culture equal to 15% of a city's faith output 
if that city is built on a hill. And secondly, it also grants plus four combat strength to military units when fighting on hills, which is not insignificant either. What is really important to keep in mind here is the synergy. When you consider just how great this sieve is at generating faith in its cities, and then to be able to turn around and turn that into a not insignificant amount of science and culture throughout the game is actually very strong. Now in this picture, uh, you can see that they've got some numbers that actually don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, you can see that their faith generation in the city is 89.4. And so 15% of that would be somewhere in and around 14-ish, well, 14 and a half. So I don't know where they're getting this 31.2 faith uh, or 30.2 culture from faith and 31.2 science from faith. I don't know. I'm not, my guess is that this is probably pictures that were taken from an earlier build when they were experimenting with how strong to make this ability and how much science and culture to give. I don't really know. Or there's something else happening in the background that I don't know about. Uh, otherwise, I, I really can't explain where this number is. Maybe it's part of the religion is also giving them science and culture. I, I can't figure it out. Maybe if somebody's got an idea in the, in the comment sections, I'll be happy to listen to it. But while those numbers seem crazy good and you might think, well, the, the number, the real number is not going to be that great. The real number is actually not insignificant. And I want you to take a look at their overall faith generation up here in the corner. You can see, uh, maybe you can see it, 626.4. So let's just say, for instance, that they couldn't build every single city on a hill. Let's just say, for instance, they only built half of these cities on hills. So only half of the faith that you see here that is being generated is being generated in cities on hills. That still means that over 300 faith is being generated in those cities, and that would be equivalent of 45 science and 45 culture per turn in your civilization overall, which is pretty significant. When you think about how, you know, you think about a great scientist like um, Isaac Newton and how much you want to go, go get him because you get that plus two science in universities. That's a super easy way to get passive income. Uh, in your science category all the way through the, the rest of the game. If you have 12 cities with universities already built and established and you get him, that is equal to 24 science per turn, before bonuses of course, 24 science per turn. That's approximately half of the, of the science you would be generating with this ability at this point in the game. And keep in mind that this is actually science and culture you're going to get from the very beginning of the game, not once you get a particular great scientist. And that only includes the science. That doesn't mention the 45 or so culture that you're also beginning to push you through. And like I said, it's from the very beginning of the game. So if you get, you know, 20 or 30 faith online in a couple of cities with hills, that's an extra three or four or five science and three or four or five culture early in the game, which you can push through the trees on, the, their tech trees on. And like I said, when we've seen in these abilities, culture from improved resource, or sorry, faith from improved resources, a whole bunch of faith uh, bonuses in your trade routes. And plus you've got a tile improvement that can generate a crazy amount of faith, a ton of fantastic passive faith ability, and you're turning it into culture and science. This is not insignificant. That 15% is absolutely uh, going to be a solid bonus to this civilization make no mistake about it and like i said there's also the uh, plus four combat strength on hills um, which is a very nice little add-on um, particularly from a defensive standpoint if you've got barbarians coming at you or a neighboring civ is coming at you and you've just got your units you can just stack those guys up on hills make them come into you take your defensive bonuses take that extra plus four strength and and really play a defensive game like that if you are going to play a little bit of offensive game and maybe try to take a neighboring sieve or a couple cities at least, um, you can keep an eye out for where hills are and try to and try to attack into those to get the bonus. Although, of course, if you're attacking into hills, you're also taking a negative combat bonus, so it kind of washes each other out. But, like I said, it, when you're adding that on to the already fantastic ability that is the Council of Ministries with that science and culture, I mean, you're not going to say no, right? Um now there is the one minor discount uh, or one minor downside, I should say, that I have to point out here in that you do have to build the cities on a hill. Now I do like building on Plains Hills sometimes because of course the 2-2 city center, 
So if there's a number of hills in the area as well, I'll try to I'll try to settle on Plains Hills sometimes to get that nice little production boost early and then have more production in the area. So if there's no Plains Hills in the area and you got to settle on Grasslands Hills, that can be a little bit of a downfall because you are giving up a, a positive production tile. Certainly it's always a nice idea when you're settling cities, if you try at least to uh, settle on a flat land in and around hills, so you're not giving up those hills, which equal production and, and also even uh, an opportunity to build your tile improvement. But a pretty minor give up to have your cities on hills in order to produce uh, a bunch of passive science and culture uh, quite easily. So you're going to want to definitely be sure to build those cities on hills. And like I said, really good ability. And I would actually uh, break this down as a tier uh, tier A ability as well, as a, um, as a leadership ability. This is absolutely tier A. Um, I considered maybe it's a tier B, you know, but then I really looked at those numbers and I thought all the way through the game, start to finish, bonus science and bonus culture. I, I couldn't not give it an, an, an A tier ability. So there it is. There you go. There we have it, Mandaluk the second and the people of Ethiopia. Overall, a really strong sieve. And I really wanna give a big kudos to the Fire Axis team for the creation of this sieve, which has a lot of great synergies and will absolutely prove to be a fun sieve to play with. And as we break things down by category, let's take a look at how these guys look overall in a science game. And after hemming and hawing, I decided to give these guys a three out of five on science. I, my first impression was, well, maybe just a two. But when you consider a massive amount of faith generation, which means you're going to have excellent monumentality runs. And not only that, but like I said earlier, excellent monumentality runs, and you don't even have to take a faith generating pantheon to do it. Oftentimes when you're playing with a lot of other civs, you're just kind of stuck like, I've got to take a, the faith generating pantheon if I can get it. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to do monumentality runs because I'm not planning on building holy sites. Now, certainly you can build holy sites with these guys. It's going to give you that much more faith generation, that much more science and culture passively. But you can go ahead and take any of the other pantheons. You could take uh, culture on your plantations for a little boost there early. You can take the free settler if you want to get moving that way. You could take divine spark to help you out with great science points and everything else that comes with that. And still not have to worry about whether or not you're going to have a strong monumentality run. So that's definitely worth an extra tick in a science game. And then I thought, you know, when you throw in the passive science and culture as well, again, not a ton of science. It's not going to be a crazy amount of science to, to really throw you through that science tree really well. But when it's both science and culture, and of course, as you guys know, in a science run, you want both. You need to work both of those trees simultaneously in order to get to better governments and better government cards and all that kind of stuff and push through the technology. There's no doubt that that extra science and culture is worth a tick, and I gave these guys a 3 out of 5 in a science run. Now, as for a culture game, another one I kind of hemmed and hawed about, but I felt my, I had myself unable to give them anything less than a 4 out of 5. Let's talk about why. Obviously, like similar to the science game, you've got that free science and culture that you're getting from your faith generation, which is... Not insignificant, like I said, it's going to help push you through from the very beginning of the game to the end. You've also got the faith generation, which helps you in your monumentality runs, but it also does a really, really good job of helping you further down the line with things like purchasing your uh, your naturalists. Sorry, the name escaped me for a minute. To in order to get your national parks, you'll be able to get lots of rock bands down the road, which will help you with uh, generating tourism. And of course, you will have the faith to be able to purchase the archaeology museums and the archaeologists in order to very quickly, instead of having to wait to get them built and then wait to get the archaeologists built, it's like, oh, sweet, archaeology museum, ding, purchase with faith. Oh, I need an archaeologist, ding, archaeologist purchased. Let's run off and grab some immediate culture and tourism with that. And you're generating it so many more turns earlier. Absolutely a significant ability. In addition to all that, Something I did not mention about our wonderful Rock Yoon um, Church tile improvement is that at the research of flight, these also generate tourism equivalent to their faith generation. So if you are building fantastic plus five, plus six, or even plus seven faith Rock Yoons, those are going to start generating tourism as well. 
I'm going to have to get into a game and see just how powerful those are, but it seems really super powerful strong. And those, if you've got a bunch of those in each city, like even two or three of them in each city, combine that with all the other abilities that you've got going on with these guys. I don't know how you could give these guys any less than a four out of five with culture. I'm really looking forward to trying these guys in one of those games just to see how strong that culture game is. Next, we have the military game. I can click it. There we go. There's the military game, and I gave them a 2 out of 5. And really, it's kind of barely a 2 out of 5. A relatively insignificant, unique unit, which will not really impact a domination game to any significant degree. Like I said, you could get, you can go out and get the knight units at the same era point and actually have stronger units than these guys are going to uh, generate for you. So... Not anything I would really write home about. I gave them the two simply because I like that extra four combat strength on hills. Uh, being able to dictate the uh, combat on hills or if sometimes you have to attack into uh, cities on hills, you're going to get an extra boost as well. Maybe that two is even generous, but for now, we're calling it a two. And finally, the religious game. And as you can only imagine, these guys are S tier religion game fanatics five out of five no doubt about it there's i can't i rack my brain there's nobody i can even think of that can compete with these guys from any of the other civs in faith generation they're just it seems it was so much fun to watch this video and see the faith just come pouring in part after part it was just a two and a half minute video or whatever it was of just being washed with wonderful amounts of faith and this game, as you guys may have noticed, has pushed more and more towards not only making religions more relevant and even non-religion games, but making faith more relevant as the game goes on and they develop this game. And so being able to generate so much faith is going to help you in so many different ways. But in particular, in a religion game, where the only thing that really matters is how fast you generate faith, these guys are going to generate so much faith for you. I, I can't even imagine how fast a faith game I'm going to be able to run with these guys, but we're going to try it. We'll see just how quickly we can go in a faith game because I think it's going to be crazy. It's going to be pretty nuts indeed. Okay, there it is. That's it. That's all I got. That's breaking it down, and that's my first impressions of these guys, which I really do believe will make them a top-tier Civ, no doubt about it. Maybe not a top five. Maybe not, but once I've had a chance to play these games, these guys, for a game or two, I don't think there's any doubt they're going to be, at the very least, a top 10 Civ going forward. I, I'd, be, I'd be shocked if these guys played worse than a top 10. They might be a top 5, simply because of how well-rounded their skill set is and just how well all their abilities synergize together. So there you go. That's my first impressions of Menelik and the Ethiopians. I hope you've enjoyed this analysis as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. Please take your thoughts to the comments section below and let me know what you think of Ethiopia and what kind of victories you're looking forward to pursuing with Menelik. And remember, if you enjoyed this video, it makes a big difference if you go ahead and click that like button. So I'd really appreciate it if you do that for me. And if you haven't done so already, then be sure to click that subscribe button as well. In case you didn't know it, I release fresh Civ 6 content every single day on the channel, so be sure not to miss any of it. Okay, take care, folks. That's all I got. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.